Okay, here's our vise, and um, we're just gonna verify that the vise is parallel to the x-axis to begin with. I'm gonna get us a reading on the indicator up to zero. I'm gonna jog it back and forth. These jaws have a little bit of bumps in them, but as you can see, vice is indeed parallel to the x-axis, you know, within reason. Um, now we're going to check, uh, I'm going to run the indicator, i got to back this jaw off a little bit. This machine is kind of difficult to do it because it's got this coolant guard here and you can't really rotate the vice handle very well. I'm, I'm rotating it by hand right now. Um, I'm going to see if I can set this up in such a way that we can uh, run this indicator up and down the whole jaw here. Let's see if I got clearance here. Check it first. Okay. So now I'm going to run our, our y-axis up again, up to zero. Okay. I'm going to run it up and down this jaw. So there's the bottom of the jaw. You can see this particular um, vise, this is, this is a relatively new Kirk vise, and you'll notice it has a thousandth of an inch variation in the fixed jaw already. So if we were to if we were to try to um, square up a part in this vise, we'd have a little difficulty. We'd be a thousandth of an inch off right from the get-go, probably, if not more, because there is actually no force on the vise at this moment. And so now we're got to, so we got to deal with it. I don't know if you if you ever check your vise. I suppose it's possible that this um, this jaw here, this uh, hard jaw, could be ground out of parallel, or even there even could possibly be some crud or something behind the jaw. I don't know. I don't think so because when I put the jaw in there, I was pretty careful to keep it clean. So already this vice, before we even start, could have a problem if we did it the normal way. I also want to show you something about clamping parts in the vise. Let's say you had a part like this. This is just a one, two, three block. Say so you had a part like that, and you, um, you know, you want to set it on the on the base of the vise down here because you know you can't set it here because that's not parallel to the machine. So you want to set it down here, and if you, um, a lot of people do this. I've seen it quite a bit on YouTube and you know it's probably all right for 90 percent of stuff you do but if you want to uh, do something a little more accurate or close tolerance you might have a problem with this doing it this method and I'll show you why now and I don't have any tension on the vise right now and I'm going to start to tension the vise up okay now I didn't even move the y-axis so you can see I'm, I'm tightening it up and already I've kicked the jaw back a thousandth of an inch. And that wouldn't be a problem really so much except that if, if I indicate this now, you see this jaw is no longer parallel to the x-axis even though we just verified that it was. It's, um, shoot, it's off in this distance a good thousandth and a half, a little bit more than that, almost two thousandths of an inch in that way. And now let's let's raise this up. I can't really indicate on this side very easy, so I'm going to go to the to the um, back side of this m moving jaw. This will give us the same, more or less the same result. I mean, it's good enough for this demonstration, and we'll see how uh, how out of parallel this is. Of course, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see that this is way off because, because we're uh, we're putting a big we're putting a big twist in this this moving jaw like this, 
because we got all the force right here. Okay, but let's say we're not even going to worry about that. Let's let's just say, well, maybe it'll just hold the part square. We won't even worry about the vise being out of uh, whack, you know, that way. But let's check it and see. I'm thinking you're going to find that this. Let's bring it back up to zero and jog it in the X. You're going to see. Well, if you could see it, this is a very only an inch wide, but you can see that that's that's not parallel to the x-axis anymore either. If we were to clamp the block the other way, it would even be more dramatic because you saw how much off the 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 fixed jaw was. Along here, it was off almost two thousandths of an inch. I mean. So let's let's look at this side of the part, get this indicator or a read here. Okay. And we'll see, put it on zero here more precisely. Okay, it's pretty close. And then we'll move this over, over to the other edge. We're half a thousandth off here. So you can see that this is uh, this is throwing the part out of parallel. We can't really shove a shim in here right now. I can even show you this more dramatically, probably if I put the part the other direction in the vise, like this, it'll be much more dramatic. This is probably more likely the way you would actually hold a part like this in the vise. If you were trying to do this, you'd want to set it, you know, the whole part on this part of the vise on this Kurt style vise because there's a hole in the middle of these vices or a slot you know that that runs in the middle here for the nut to go back and forth in and so people do this and they clamp the part down and if you clamp down with a, enough force on the handle you can see that you can get look at this is a two thousandths thick shim and I can shove it in there Oh, almost a half an inch on that side of the part. I don't know if I can get it in the back here. It seems to be pretty solid up against the back, but this means that the part is, is only being held right in this area here. Pin, you know, we're just holding it like right here, and the rest of this is just like really not being held at all. So you're not getting any good hold on the part. Let's, um, let's look at this again and see how good we're uh, sitting here, actually. On the, um, how parallel we are with the x-axis on this. See, we're off, oh, maybe a, a good solid thousandth of an inch, almost a little bit more than that across the two inch width of that gauge. Well, thousandth, let's call it a thousandth of an inch off. Let me go back on the other side of the part. Should be the same if that block is uh, parallel, right? Which hopefully it is. Okay, get a reading on here up to zero. Okay. Which it's the more or less the same. I mean, my zero is probably a little bit off here. Okay, so because we have the part, the jaw pinched over like this, and when this this is at such an angle here that the part is actually being kicked over in the vise. Now if we, um, if we put something to balance the force, let's say we put another one, two, three block in this side of the vise, like this. We come back on this. After I tighten the vise up pretty good. And uh, this should be fairly parallel. Let me give it a zero pretty good. Okay, then a couple of tents there. 
so we're reasonably parallel back again so if you're going to hold a part in the vise on one side you need to put something in the other side over here whichever side you're going to you know is going to normally be open so that you can balance the force of the jaws because the jaw will push back but it actually even moves this solid jaw back the the fixed jaw back somewhat too um, we can actually verify that if I actually put this indicator let me take this this out of the vise again take that out but you're still gonna see see it even moves more with about the same tension I put on the vise thought I can just shove on that handle and move the indicator even um, But see the, it's pushing this part of the jaw back this way because that's in its original position still. See how much it's pushing it back? Two thousandths of an inch. Theoretically, if I loosen this, it should come back to zero, right? So now we're back parallel. So that's how much the body of this vise gives when you tighten it. And some of that force is going down into the table. So it can have an effect on things depending on how exaggerated that gets okay so that was a little bit showing you you know what can happen you know just grabbing parts off center if the part if you have the part sitting on tall parallels like this and you're just grabbing the top of it this can even be more exaggerated as far as the force on the on the jaws pushing the jaws and the jaws will tend to to pivot you know like this in here because these screws here can only hold so tight and they're going to give everything everything has a certain amount of give to it on a machine even though you think it's solid it's not really solid at all everything moves a little bit so you got to keep all this in mind so now now we're going to get to um, actually squaring up this little block of aluminum here and you can see it's rough sawed I'm going to clamp the rough sawed faces in the vise to begin with so that you know nobody thinks well he's already starting on parallel sides and we'll show you how I would square this up if I really wanted it precisely square like I say this isn't totally necessary with everything but it um it works if you need to hold a close tolerance on something it it um it's worked for me in the past anyway so let me get that kind of going and then we'll come back. Okay, here we are back um, with the part clamped in the vise. Now the first side, it doesn't really matter too much how you clamp it. I've got this little dowel pin down here, quarter inch dowel pin to kind of put most of the pressure up against the fixed jaw, keep things straight and uh, this parallel and see it's Parallel's pretty tight. I mean, I can move it, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the part doesn't shift right now, all we're gonna do is take some light cuts on the face and here. Um, but first we're gonna set our setup up. So we're gonna change um, to the spindle probe on here, on this machine, just to do it quickly. Um, I'm gonna, I got the camera set on the spindle of this thing, on the side of the spindle. I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I'm gonna see if we can do a tool change like this. I've got to maybe be ready to grab this camera in case it gets knocked off of here. So we're going to go to tool uh, 10. This tool changer only has, holds 10 tools. I keep the spindle probe in the 10th slot here. So first we've got to get it in the right mode here. Tool 10, APC forward. Now let's see. I'm going to get ready to grab this. Oh, it looks like we're all right. Okay. So we got the spindle probe in there. You probably can't see that. Let's see if I uh, if I can uh, maybe get it in the view a little bit better here. Okay. There. That's a little better. I can see it now. I'll go down here. What we're gonna do is just probe the center line of this block of material. Um, this machine 
like all Haas's that come with the spindle probe option, have a, has um, Easy Set, Renishaw Easy Set software in it, so it makes it kind of easier to to do this. But we have to sort of know roughly how big the block is. I think it's like three inches this way, more or less, a little bit more, but three inches and a little less than two inches that way. So in order to find the center of this, we got to enter in a some commands. There's a G65 uh, P9023 is their, um, what do you call it, macro, I guess you call it. And we want to set S1 as a fixture offset one. And we want to go X, three point, X, approximately, it's going to stand off of this X dimension, so it'll just find the center of it. X, three point, and we're going to go Z minus, oh, let's say 0.5, end of block. And then we got to go G65 again, P, uh, P9023 S1 for fixture offset one, Y, two point, Z minus, 0.5 uh, and the block. I uh, I left I left a certain command off here. We got to have an A4 point for measuring a web on the Renishaw cycle. So I got to put that four point four point insert. I put that on both lines. Okay, now we're ready to go. Look at our offset page. So you can see if it sets the right offsets for cycle start. Come over in the X direction. Probe both sides of the part. Now it's going to set the, the fixture offset right in the middle of this block of material. Okay. And we're going to go in the Y direction. If I did that right. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we're going to measure that. We're going to set that in the Y direction. And uh, actually, I forgot one more thing. We're going to set our Z. So we've got to add one more line to this program. There you go, G65 P9023 S1 A9 point, uh, nine point in the block. That sets the Z. Oh, so then we've got to go back to MDI, go here, and let's do this. So that should come straight down in the Z. Set our Z offset, which it did. Okay. Now, I jog this probe a little bit out of the way here. And we're going to set Z minus 0 0.020. We're going to set the Z down another 20,000 to, to a, a minus 0.020 just so we'll take a little bit of stock off the top of the part. Okay, now I have to make a little simple program, so I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second, make that, and then we're gonna come back to do this, actually. Okay, here we are back again. Um, I think we got a program that might work here, so let's try it and see. We'll change to the face mail, tool number one. Two inch heli mail. I'm going to spray a little WD 40 on top of the part just to make sure, you know, give it a little juice here. I'm going to face the top of the part. We're going to actually run this twice just to um, take any spring out of the cut. Okay, so here's our face cut. Slow it down a little bit here because we've got the number right. Okay. And we're going to come over here and we're going to change to our half inch end mill. I already touched these tools off earlier, so I kind of think they're in the right place. Hopefully. Let's see. I'm thinking that I uh, maybe I didn't touch these tools off earlier. Maybe I should. Um, let's uh, see what's happening here. Coming down way too far with that tool. 
let's um, let's check that. We'll touch it off again. So we got G65, uh, P9023, um, A. We got to have an A12 point, A12 point uh, tool two, and a block. Let's run that and see what happens here. Maybe I didn't touch it off. I thought I did. There's a there's a tool probe on this machine, so we can touch tools off. And it's kind of nice. Otherwise, you'd have to manually do it. But it works pretty good here, like this. Let's check this offset. See what happens. Here. That didn't change too much. Maybe I got something wrong with the program here. I'll check my program. Didn't really verify this program too good. Now, one more time. Okay, good. Okay, now, let's just spray WD-40 on this. So we don't get to run the flood coolant and make a big mess here. I've got the clearance way bigger than I need to here. I could refine that a little bit. I might on the rerun the program. Okay. Let me uh I'm gonna refine that a little bit so we don't have to move out so far. 1.75 alter and X minus 1.75 alter here. Okay. I'm going to set the Z down minus 0.002. It's another couple thousandths on the face mill. We're going to rerun this just to make sure we don't have any push off on this whole deal here. Let me blow this off a little bit. Okay. Just to make sure. Taking another couple thousandths off of here. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit so you can see a little better. Well, if you were seeing that the first time it ran, you didn't look at the screen of the camera very well. I guess you were. Okay. juice on there. Now, I think I'm going to run I'm going to run that tool one more time to tool two. Because we want to kind of hold some precise size here. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not cutting anything more on there. And it looks like it's doing pretty good. Okay, and we're going to get a micrometer and check it here in a second. See what we got. It doesn't really matter what it is. I just want to know what it is so that when we flip the part around, we'll, uh, we'll 
well, machine to the exact same size. Theoretically, the machine should do it, but we're gonna check it just to be sure. I don't usually use these mics. It's just gonna throw me off a little bit because it looked like the the zero is a little bit past the line on this micrometer, but it really doesn't matter. I'm, we're gonna take it down. It's a. It says it's a thousandth and a half inch, uh, a thousandth and a half inches. Maybe just a hair less than that. Let's see. A thousandth and a half. Um, I'm going to take it down another thousandth and a half just so we're right on the inch and seven eighths. So let's do that. Let's do it's for the heck of it. So let's, let's go to our offset. We'll go to minus point oh oh one five on the wire, on the diameter. Um, that'll take it half of each side off. Let's run tool number two again. Here we go. I'm going to change the camera a little bit so you actually will see this because you won't see it like that. We're going to uh, run this a couple times more to make sure we got all the spring out of the cup. See if I can squirt some stuff on the back side. Huh? Normally I might use uh, flood coolant, but I didn't really want to do that because it gets all over everything with the camera and all that. So I'm going to run that one more time. Put some little... Just to make sure we got everything cleaned up nice. No push off of the tool or anything. I'm just making this a nice even inch and seven eighths just for the purpose of this demonstration. If you were really doing this for real, you'd be going to some, you might be going to some dimension of some sort, maybe slightly larger than your finished size of your part so that you would uh, have something to take off of the faces here. Okay. So let's check this thing again. Move the camera so you can see what I'm kind of doing here. Yeah, find my micrometer. Okay, make sure that's clean. And it's this is important that you you get this to some size that you know it's some size that you know. I've just taken it to inch and seven eighths. The size is not critical really, but you're gonna have to get the other side exactly the same width when you when we flip this over. So right now it's it's right on an inch and seven eighths according to this micrometer and uh, we're gonna file off these birds a little bit here now if you were gonna square this thing up in the other directions I'm not gonna do that for this demonstration but it might pay to actually take some cuts on the sides here too so that you would already be square to everything so when you stand it up you could do the same thing and we're going to do this direction but like I so said we're not going to worry about that right right this second okay now I'm going to clean things up and flip it over and get back with you so right now I'm going to turn things off and we'll be back in a second